Hi, my name is Daniela Amoyo Gordon. Back in 1997, I was on my way over to a holiday dinner with the family. I had uh, myself, my son, and two of my nephews in the car with me uh, driving over to the holiday dinner. My husband was actually in the truck behind us because he did have to take a ladder over to the house where we were going for the dinner. On the way, um, leaving our house, going on one of the main roads, an old man ran a stop sign. And that's when my horrific car accident happened. When we were struck, the vehicle was struck on the right passenger side. However, all the impact of the accident literally crushed me in my chest and stomach area. My leg was caught under the dashboard. Immediately after getting hit, my husband had jumped out of his truck to walk over to our vehicle to see exactly if we were okay. And when he did, he came by my side and saw that I wasn't bleeding or anything and looked over at our son and he could see that my son was bleeding under his nose a little bit. So he went over to him to help him, not knowing that I couldn't breathe at all. I realized I couldn't expand my lungs. I couldn't get any oxygen in. I just knew I was going to die that day. And I did. Immediately after getting hit, I was in the most excruciating pain ever as I've had so many injuries from the impact. And I remember right after and feeling all that pain, I literally had my entire life flash in front of me. It was almost like a fast forward movie that ran, which felt like a 30 second to a minute long, but it was everything inclusive. Immediately right after that, I remember my son was trying to talk to me and I couldn't answer him because when you can't breathe, you also cannot talk. So I couldn't even answer him. But right after the the my life flashing in front of me, I automatically started having every worry in the world go through my head. And for me, it was everything about my child because at the time he was only five years old. So I instantly was worrying how he was going to be, if he was going to be okay, how was he going to grow, what was going to happen with his life, and how would life be without his mom. It was it was devastating uh, to go through that. And immediately after all that worrying that I could have possibly had, um, I wasn't here any longer. When I landed, and it felt like it happened so quick, when I landed up there, I immediately realized how it was the most peaceful place I had ever, ever experienced. However, I didn't know where I was, but I was peaceful. I was very comfortable. There was so much unconditional love. There was no worry at all, as if I... Nothing happened prior to that. I had no pain whatsoever. I remember looking around and I could feel a very dominant male presence. However, I could not see an actual uh, male figure. I remember looking around and I could see my physical dead body laying in front of me about six feet away where my head was to the left and my feet were to the right, and I could see my eyes were closed, that I was not breathing. I knew that part of me was dead. And it was almost as if I had that mental telepathy of information, meaning I had to actually say goodbye to my physical body because I was no longer going to be with that anymore. When I landed there as well, I realized I couldn't see colors aside from huge contrasts of black, grays, and whites. And I remember looking around because it was very unfamiliar, even though I said to myself, I remember distinctively how, wow, this is home. I'm home, meaning we all have homes. 
where we live here on earth. And of course, our homes, most of them are amazing. That's our peaceful place. But it was unlike that. That was truly home. There was every bit of perfection in every way there. I remember looking around and realizing my physical body is dead, but my soul, my conscious was still very much aware. And um, when I looked around, I realized there were no walls, no windows, no floor, no times, no schedule, no worries at all. None, just pure, peaceful bliss. After looking at my body and literally saying goodbye to it and looking around, I had literally witnessed infinity in front of me. In other words, no matter where I looked and all around, there was no end up there. Everything was infinite in every way, shape, or form. I also remember at some point I was receiving an enormous amount of downloads, so much information that I would literally have to write at least one to two books if I could cover it in that. It was that amount of information that was downloaded. I also remember at some point where my soul was starting to turn to the left at about 35 to 40 degrees angle, as if I'm heading somewhere else. This is when all the colors were presented to me. Before it was all black, grays, and whites, I saw so many colors that were just mind-blowing. I mean, we have a lot of beautiful colors here on Earth, and artists do amazing work with those. However, those colors were just out of this world. They were extremely bright and vivid and very detailed, very crisp, brilliant colors, brilliant colors all around. I remember when I was turning that 35 to 40 degree angle, at that time, that's when I came back. Coming back was when I was already in the ambulance. And I remember looking at the paramedic and, and just telling him I cannot breathe. I was having such a difficulty time just expanding my lungs from being crushed. And I kept telling him I, I can't breathe. And he kept reassuring me that you are breathing. If you aren't breathing, you're not going to be able to talk to me. Keep talking to me. Keep looking at me. Stay with me. He kept reassuring me over and over until I got to the trauma unit. When I got to the trauma unit, I was worked on about six hours just to stabilize me. Um, I know at some point uh, the doctors were going to my husband and telling him that they are really trying to do everything to save me. However, they can't guarantee it. They did um, continue working on me for the six hours, and thank God they did finally stabilize me. After that was when so much aftermath of injuries had occurred. I literally stopped counting at about 30 surgeries and procedures that I've had to go through, but I know I'm easily in the you know 50s right now. Um, I've lost a lot of organs. I bled internally in a lot of places. Um, had to have a lot of surgeries to correct the bleeding internally in different parts of my body. I had suffered through four miscarriages as well because of all the tra trauma that my body has been through. I had to go through at least 10 years of physical therapy, aqua therapy, in and out of a wheelchair uh, with a cane. But today, and this has been for a while now, I'm really grateful that one, I was impacted and not my son because then I would have been living a nightmare for the rest of my life. So that's first and foremost that I'm the most grateful for. The second is coming back with gifts that I never had prior to this. After coming back, I realized that spirits can come to me and I can connect with them. So I realized, wait a minute, now I'm a mediumship. I also have incredible energy that come through my hands that heal people, that heal souls that have gone to doctors 10 to 40 years. I, I, I get a lot of them and couldn't have been helped. In other words, 
they've exhausted all their medical means and I get them and they're doing so much better. I realized I can do dream interpretation, medical intuition, mediumship. It encouraged me so much that prior to my accident, I did go, I, I did attend college and I studied psychology and then I moved on to radiology. And I thought, wow, you know, this is great. I have a really good career. Everything is good. You know, my life was happy. However, that did all change um, after the accident. And once I went through a lot, and I mean decades, it wasn't just 10 years because I still go through things because of the injuries, but it took decades, one, to process the whole near-death experience because of how profound it is. It's very profound. I had to talk to spiritual leaders and one actually really helped me because the first time that I had an interaction with a soul that came to me, I was scared because I didn't understand it. This was something new in my, in my world. And I remember going to the spiritual leader about it and he was amazing by explaining to me and, and saying, Daniela, when you crossed over and came back, you never shut the door. So that channel is always open. But if it scares you, you can also always close it. So I realized souls are really respectful. So I never shut it. And it's actually helped me and helped a lot of souls all throughout the world. So I can offer a lot of services to many souls that help them a lot as well. And going through all this actually inspired me to go back to school, as I love learning, and get my doctorate degree, which I should have in a couple of weeks, um, in metaphysics, which lines up perfectly for me and with what I do and what I can offer. But I have to say, this horrific accident was so traumatic. The NDE wasn't traumatic. It was absolutely the most peaceful thing I could have ever experienced. And coming back from that, it has never been the same, never been the same, however, in the best way. So aside from all the injuries, the trauma, the horrificness of everything, and thank God the kids were all fine. That was the most important for me. Even though I had to endure all this in my lifetime, through decades and decades. I'm really grateful today because I can help a lot of souls and I have a whole different way of healing that is just really precise. It helps a lot. I hope that if anything, it also brings you a lot of comfort. Remember to love as much as you can love. Remember to respect as much as you can respect. Remember not to judge that's not for us to do here. Remember to care as much as you can care and just be genuine and enjoy every single minute of your life because it is that short.